All right, this is the piece that we have that we want to cut on both sides. So we've cut our first side out. We've left it big with this border all the way around. We have some holes in here, 3 8 holes for our index pins. So I'm going to move this off the table for now. We don't need this one quite yet. And what I have now is a sacrificial piece of wood. Today it's a piece of particle board. And that's on top of our typical spoil board for our machine. This particle board piece is where I'm going to drill those index pins into so that when I align that piece over and flip it over, it will uh, be lined up in the right place. So I'm going to put the pins up and I'm going to get this in place and then we'll take a look at the computer. All right, so we've now run our first piece and we're done with this other stuff. For the moment, I'm going to delete all this extra pieces. I don't, I don't want to delete any of my parts that I want to do the double side on, but I'm just deleting these other parts for now. And I can recalculate the tool pass so that way it only shows me the stuff that I want here. Now I don't want to cut this way at the far end of the machine. I want to be working down here as this uh, corner is where the XY is homed. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. And it doesn't have to be right on the edge. It could be over one direction or the other a little bit, however you want to place that on there. And then again, I'm going to hit tool pass recalculate since I moved it. Tells me there's an error because it's trying to recalculate stuff that's not there anymore. All right, so I'm over here at my tool paths. If I double click on the holes, because that's what I want to cut first, I want to make sure we're going three quarters of an inch deep. And that's about all I need to check on here. And then what we're going to do is actually save this tool path. So right here, I'm going to save the tool path and save it. I'm going to save over my 0.25 because that's what I need and hit yes. So once I've saved that, then I'm going to come out here to the machine and I'm going to put the pins up so I can align my board and I'm going to turn the vacuum on. And while this is running, I'm going to have it pre-drill those holes for me so that I can align my piece. And if I go file open, when I first open from desktop 0.25, I should see that I'm going to get just two uh, holes drilled in there for now. That's what we want to see. So I'm going to get my board lined up and then we're going to come back and hit enter on the machine to get it running. So now that we've got our board lined up to these index pins, we're nice and tight against all of those pins. We're going to turn uh, the vacuum on to hold this in place. So I took the compressed air and blew out our hole and now I'm going to take one of our little dowel pins here and push it down in there and that's what we're going to use to index our piece so that it's in the correct spot as we flip it over. I'm going to come down here and do the same thing and put that pin in that hole. And now I'm going to get my board that we originally cut. I've got the board over here we originally did. And that pin that we put in the table is now going to go in this hole. You may want to make sure that this is orientated the same way. So when I was on the computer, I just shifted it down. So I'm going to want to make sure that the good side or the top side is still on the top and the bottom side is still on the bottom. Even though I did my efforts to make sure it was centered, I still want to orientate this the way it was originally on the machine. So I'm going to flip this over and very carefully guide this pin onto that hole. And I'm going to do the same down here. I'm going to guide the pin that's under there onto that hole. And once they start to line up, then I'm going to push this down nice and tight on there. Now, because we have this extra layer of sacrificial piece, what's going to happen is the vacuum is not going to be able to suck this piece down. So in this instance, we're going to need to make sure we're using tabs to keep this in place as it's cutting so it doesn't move. Because the vacuum is not going to have enough suction to hold this down through that second piece. 
So we're done with the holes. We're not gonna be working with them anymore. But what I'm gonna check on is the outside double side here. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna show me it's cutting the outside. Well, I need to change that now. Now I wanna cut this piece out right here. I wanna do the outside edge of this inner piece and I wanna be outside, that's checked. We're going uh, uh, 0.68 deep and a quarter inch end mill, all that looks good. We're gonna add tabs and we're gonna edit the tabs. And I'm gonna come in here and I wanna put a tab around this piece, but I'm gonna avoid where the joints are. So I'm gonna come around, if there was a rabbit on the end, I would want to avoid this end. It becomes difficult to clean up these tabs on the end if there was a rabbit here, because the rabbit, um, as we're cleaning it up, the flush trim router bit would wanna follow along that rabbit rather than the edge of the board. So that's why we're choosing uh, to do tabs on the ends because there's no rabbits, we'll be okay with that. So I just went around and put a few different tabs on here to hold this in place. Because remember the vacuum is not gonna do a very good job at sucking this down. So it's really these two pins that are holding this in place as we cut. So we wanna make sure there's nice tabs around here and we can take the flush trim router when we're done and clean these up. So I've got that done and I'm gonna hit um, calculate. Now I have this other one that doesn't have tabs and I'm gonna delete that right now, this double pass. I'm gonna delete this. And what I wanna do is I wanna take this one and I wanna uh, copy or duplicate this. This is going to allow me to, as I click on this, cut around the outside and it's gonna keep those tabs in the exact same location. That way I don't accidentally put a tab here and then maybe offset it so there's not any strength with that tab. So that's why I wanna keep those tabs um, or I wanted to duplicate that so those tabs are in the same location as I do that. And this time again, we're gonna go 0.75. We're going all the way through, but we've already cut most of the way through. So we're gonna change this to one. We wanna do it in one pass because it's already cut to 0.68 uh, depth. And we're gonna scroll down. We wanna make sure we're on the outside still. That looks good, outside vectors. And we're gonna calculate. So now if I preview this, preview all tool paths, it should show you that we're cutting all the way through and it's leaving some tabs. So that all looks good. I'm gonna save everything except for the quarter inch holes. We already did those. And I'm gonna close this view and I'm gonna go save. And I'm gonna save this as uh, 0.25 again and just save over that old file. And now when we come in, we have to adjust a few things in this interface here. I'm gonna to have to change the home setting. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna come up to settings and I'm gonna to go to the home position. And in the home position, I'm gonna pick um, the pins, plus spoil board plus three quarter scrap. That's the one I want right there. And I'm gonna click go to and the machine is gonna to move to that location. So I'm gonna to go to there. So that means my home position is set. I'm gonna turn the pins on and make sure this is lined up and then vacuum it down. And now I'm gonna load the job I wanna do. File open, 0.25, open. And you can see it's gonna cut out the outside. And I'm gonna hit enter. All right, so we're gonna get our piece unloaded here. It's just held on with these dowels. So we're gonna just gently lift up. I wanna try not to break the little tabs too much because I wanna cut them. If possible, I wanna cut them with this little saw so that we don't tear up the piece of plywood. So I'm gonna pull up this side. Well, and the tabs all broke. That's fine, they did their job. But what we don't want is this to happen on the other piece and then have a chip out of your plywood. So that this looks like it will do. We've got our joints cut on both sides. That looks good. Um, one of them does look a little bit deeper. 
but uh, this would be the most accurate way that I think you would cut those on both sides. You could skip this part and just line it up to the corner, but this only works if it's a big piece because small pieces would not be held in place uh, very well with the vacuum held down. So this vacuum is holding our scrap piece down, which then we pin this to our other piece and that's where we're getting the stability. If this was a small piece and it wasn't over one of those vacuum holes, then that's where we would have a problem. Back at the machine here, the last thing I'm gonna do is reset this home position to my normal thickness or the pins zero here. Um, that way, when someone else comes to use this, it's set up for what they need. So just click on it and I put go to, and it's gonna come out here and rehome itself. Again, if you have any questions with how to do this double-sided cutting, please talk to your instructor.